Greetings. God of Gold is back with a quick video this time. Now, I started this video in hopes that uh, people will catch on to this new thing that I'm going to try and attempt to do with a petition. This petition, as what this video's title would suggest to you, will obviously cover Victoria 3. The game that was a very shallow and a very hollow, like, it was just an empty uh, recreation of the original with the best parts of it taken out. And I'm sure many of you also agree, even the new players, of course, because it doesn't matter if you're a player from 14 years ago, doesn't matter if you're a player from two years ago or six doesn't matter whoever has played paradox games knows what i'm talking about now i could go into a rant of paradox in general but i could save that for another video so i think if you really want that please comment down below and hit the like button that way i know that you guys want the support so uh, anyways back to the premise so Victoria 3 I'm gonna run you by a quick little history session I'm not gonna uh, waterboard you with all the details I'm sure many of you have seen and known it um, Victoria 3 it came out October 25th I think of 2022 and Upon this release, there was a lot of mixed reactions, but before that, we were very anticipated, because it actually looked very decent. It was a cosmetically gorgeous game. I'm sure that the borders meant very well, and over time, even the music, too, worked well with it. It was graphically appealing. That I have to give a credit for. But the one thing that it fell completely flat, like a pancake on, was the fact that the playability was broken beyond belief. Now, I'm just going to go over the basics. So the gameplay involved in a more in-depth um, system that allowed you to well deep into the financial sector and diplomacy rather than focusing on too much warfare i can understand trying something different although the way that this time it was executed it seemed kind of rushed there wasn't any proper regulation when it came to building it it seems like they wanted it out as fast as humanly possible for either clout or money now it seems nowadays corporations or co gaming companies such as them are adopting this new tactic in recent years whereas they release something that is half-assed and they claim to fix it later but in actuality they charge up the ass for it now the other issue with Victoria 3 is it is still far too expensive. Now, I understand it's a newer game, and I understand price tags could go down over time. For example, Victoria th um, 2 or Crusader Kings 2. Fine example. This game, well, these games, were, I would assume, pretty high when they came out. Keep in mind, that was the standard of the time, not counting inflation. I'm not going to get into that. But but prices did go down. Now, Victoria 3, on the other hand, barely has done so. Yes, they have sales. They could claim that you can play for free for only a weekend. Which, that's the other thing, too. You're only allowed to play it for that weekend for free. Even if you, they gave you, well, access to it, don't you think maybe, just maybe, 
if they had more testers before the game's release that they could have done something out of this? Like, why not just hand it to not just the critics, but also hand it to real players? Like, pick 100 random players to try it out. But no, it seems as though they only focused on the critics. The critics said it was critically acclaimed. That is dishonest. That is a complete lie. Because, yes, it looks great, but it doesn't play great. I have tested that game so many times. To Right now, I haven't played it. I have not... I pretty much just blacklisted it from everything else. The only reason why I still have access to it on my thing and I haven't gotten a refund were a number of reasons. One, I went over a threshold. And that's the other thing. Steam really dropped the ball when it comes to refunds. Because even if it's like just a bad game, you technically can't refund it for that reason anymore. So, in a sense, once you're stuck with it, you have a very limited amount of hours and time to actually play it through to get a full, to, well, maybe not a full, but to get like a decent experience of how the game functions. So that this way you have some intel on how it works. But no, what they do is you only get two hours tops and it also depends on each one too. Like some could be a week, some could be two weeks that you have to own it. And once all those thresholds are off, I'd say at least after a week or two hours of gameplay, you don't get a refund anymore. You could say it's a bad broken game and you, they will still deny you a refund. That is pathetic to say the least. So. Because that fateful day in October of 2022, it still haunts me to this day. Now, for those of you who are watching that sound stupid, this isn't the right video for you. For the rest of uh, Paradox game players, I think it's safe to say that Paradox has lost their way. They have lost their passion for what they've done. They don't seem to be enthusiastic like they used to be because back then they were able to have more free will when it comes to source code and scripting, especially with the game's mechanics. Like for example, you in EU4, that was from a time when you can actually move your units freely. Now they are drifting towards a more Hoi4 approach. Now Hoi4 some of you may not like it, but that game was actually solid. That is when the mechanics should be adopted. It should not be adopted anywhere else. Hell, even Crusader Kings 3 allows you, even though you can raise levies or decrease them or hire mercenaries, it's still adopted Victoria... No, not Victoria. Crusader Kings 2's concepts. That is, you can move your troops freely. And they improved it further by not only adding the character customization as a free update, mind you, following that game's release a couple years back, but they also they also made it so that the units can walk on water. Basically, what I mean by that is they automatically go into a transport Granted, it costs a little gold automatically by clicking the waterways, but it is way better. It is far more convenient than just having to build ships compared to the second one. Although, I do still like the second one. It's still a classic. But the third one... The third one is a prime example of a modern-ish paradox game that, if it's done right, it can work. Victoria 3 missed that mark by a long shot so this is why as of today i decided to create a petition after almost two years into the game's release and i'm still very disappointed in how it was now 
I don't know if this goal could be achieved, especially without enough support. Which, if you guys really do want to see change, just like me, and you want Paradox, and you want us to send a clear message to them saying, we want Victoria 3 taken down, remade, and re-released. That was inexcusable. It's kind of like, this is a strange analogy for some, but it's kind of like the old Sonic movie design back in 2019. They tried to do that. They tried to release something that wasn't good. But fans picked up the pieces. And they did it. They pulled it off. Granted, the movie's release date was delayed until early 2020. But it worked. This doesn't have to stay a bad game. We can change how this is. So, I ask you here, today, as a Paradox Gamer, and I know I haven't asked for much in the past, but this is something I would love for support towards. Victoria 3 doesn't deserve the way it was released. It's a sham of a release. They take your money, basically, and they release something that is relatively unfinished, unbalanced, and too daunting as all hell. With the warfare, economic systems, as well as the game uses up a lot of RAM. Also, there should also be a nudger for it, too. Kind of like in, you know... 4, where you can easily edit the map. Why don't they have that? But, nevertheless, I leave you here for today to ask for your support. And once we have enough messages, signatures, sorry, we can send a clear message to Paradox and telling them to cut the shit and bring this back to a time when it was actually decent. So, God of Gold is out. I wish you all the best. And if you really wish to, please sign that petition. Thank you and have a great day.